Hello and welcome to another video. In this video we're going to be starting our new unit on quadratic equations. And in the first section we're looking at graphing quadratic equations. So pretty much everything we're going to do is going to deal with our calculator. So for a quadratic equation, we've already looked at quadratic functions, but a quadratic equation is a second degree equation and in standard form it looks like this. So ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero. Okay, so before when we had a quadratic function, it was the exact same thing for standard form, but it was y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. Okay, now it's just an equation, everything is on one side and there's a zero on the other, that is standard form. Okay, and it also says where a does not equal zero, because if a here is zero, then we got zero times x squared and then that is going to be zero so this will be gone and then you just have bx plus c and that isn't quadratic that is just linear so some examples of a quadratic equation you could have say 2x squared plus 12x plus 16 equals zero that would be a quadratic equation in standard form okay you can just basically replace any number right there and it'll be quadratic equation in standard form so our roots and zeros, now these are going to have a few different names, but it says uh, for roots of an equation, it is the solution to an equation. So a root is the same thing as a solution. Then it says the zeros of a function is the values of x for which f of x equals zero. Okay, so that's another uh, term that means the exact same thing. So roots and zeros. And then it also says it's related to the x-intercepts of the graph of the function. So all four of those things, they all mean the same thing. So roots are equal to zeros, which are equal to x-intercepts, which are equal to the solutions to a quadratic equation. So next what we're going to look at is uh, the different types of solutions that we can get. So we're going to be graphing a quadratic, which is going to give the shape of a parabola. So we're basically going to place a parabola on a graph. And if it has, say, one x-intercept, it's going to have one solution. If it has two, it'll have uh, two solutions, three x-intercepts, three solutions, and so on. But we're going to plot these on there and then see how many solutions we can actually get. So this is just to kind of explore what we think we're going to get for solutions here first, and then after we'll write them down below. So imagine taking, say, this graph here and placing that onto my graph. It can be at different places on the graph, and depending on where it is, you can see it might cross that x-axis maybe one time, two times. It just all depends where it is, okay? So if it's like that, or like this, or like that, same idea with this other one. It could be like this, or maybe above, or below, or whoever it is. But we're going to get a different number of solutions depending on where it is. Okay. So if I would place it, this one like this, you can see it crosses the x-axis twice. If I were to place it, say, above, it never crosses the x-axis. And if I were to place it, say, perfectly like that, you can see it would cross just once there right at the very vertex. Okay, so you could either have zero, one, or two solutions, and that's what we're going to look at here next. Okay, so for your number of solutions, it says the graph of a quadratic function, it can have zero, one, or two x-intercepts, which is the same as saying it can have zero, one, or two zeros, and it can also have zero, one, or two roots. Okay, so we are going to draw different scenarios onto our graph. So the first one we're going to draw is a situation where we have no real roots or no zeros or no x-intercepts. So that is going to be a graph that cannot cross this x-axis here. So that could be something like, say this, that's never going to cross. Or it could be something like this, that will never cross either. It could not be something like this though that looks like it's not currently touching but this is going to continue 
right? That's what those arrows mean. So that one is going to cross, okay? So it can't be that one. Next we have either one real root, one real zero, or one real x-intercept. Those all mean the same thing. So that is when the graph is going to come down and touch perfectly once. So there's gonna be one x-intercept right there, or it could be one where it comes up, touches perfectly, and then comes down, and that has one x-intercept there. So those are the types that you could have for one solution, or one zero, or one root. And then the last one we have is when we have two. So two real roots, two x-intercepts, and for that, that could be something like this, comes down and I can see it crosses once, twice, or I could have a graph where it points downwards. So something like this, I can see it crosses once there and once there. So that one would have uh, two x-intercepts. Okay, so next we're on to our examples. So number one, it says, using your graphing calculator, find the roots of x squared minus six x plus nine equals zero, okay? And the way to do this, what we're gonna do is we're gonna enter in this right here into our calculator into y1, okay? And we'll do that in a sec, so I'm just gonna write y1 is gonna be x squared minus six x plus nine, okay? So I'll pull up my calculator. We're gonna go into our y equals, and then I'm gonna type that in. Okay, once I have that all typed in, I can click graph. Okay, so it looks like it's crossing right there. So what I wanna do is I wanna find that crossing point. So to find that, I gotta calculate it. I'm gonna click second, so I can get to this calculate feature. It's on the trace, so second and then trace. And then we want to find when it's at a height of zero. So we're going to go down to number two, or you can just click number two. Okay, and then what it'll do is it'll ask for the left bound. So go to where you think it crosses. So I think it crosses right there. I'll go to the left, click enter. And then it says right bound. So I'm going to go to the right side. And then I'll click enter. And then it's going to search in between those two points to see if it crosses anywhere. Okay, and I get x equals 3.0000012. Now this is approximating it, so it's going to have maybe a long decimal here sometimes. If you ever you have something like this, you can just write down x equals three, that is the answer. Okay, or maybe you have 2.99999, okay, the answer is gonna be three. So let's write down our answer, and let's also write down the steps that we did. So what we did was we clicked second, and then trace. So each of those were a button. And then what we clicked was, we chose option number two, move my calculator out of the way, and that was called the zero. And all it did was it found a height of zero, it found the x-intercept. So that's why it's called zero. It's called a zero because it's at a height of zero. We're not up and we're not down. Okay, and then the answer we got was x equals three. Okay, so a picture of that is gonna look something like that right there. That's what we had in our calculator. Okay, the next one we have solve 3m squared minus m equals negative two by graphing. So this one we're gonna do similarly. Uh, I need to get it into standard form first, so I need to move that two to the other side. To do that, I'm gonna have to add two onto both sides and then the twos will cancel. So I have 3m squared minus m plus two equals zero. And now I can say y1 is this left side here. 3m squared minus m plus 2. Okay, and then I'll graph that and find the x-intercepts of the zeros. So let's go into y equals, we'll clear what we had, and then we'll type that in. Note that even though this has m, we're still going to put in x. 
Okay, so get that all typed, click graph. And with this one, it looks like it has no x-intercepts. So that means it's got no solutions or no roots. So let's write that down. Okay, so no roots, no zeros, no x-intercepts, no solution. Can't solve that one. And a picture of what we had, we just had that right there. Okay. Now I'm going to show you another way that we could also do this one if you wanted to do it uh, a little bit differently and I find this second way actually a little bit easier. What I'll do is rather than moving the two over to the other side, I can just graph this as a function and this as a function and then find where the two cross, that's where they equal. Okay, so wherever they cross, that's where they equal. So I'm just going to go to my calculator. I'm going to clear out what I had and I'm just going to put this side into y1. Okay, and then in y2, I'm going to put in negative 2. Negative 2. Okay, and now when I graph it, okay, I got two functions. This was the parabola that was 3m squared minus m. And then this horizontal line is the function y equals negative 2. Okay, and these two don't cross, so there is no solution. That's another way that you can do it. Okay, on to number 3. So number 3 says calculate the zeros graphically of the following function. So we're given the function right there, so we are going to enter that into y1. So y1 is going to be x squared plus 2x minus 15. Let's go to our calculator. Go to y equals, clear everything else that we had, and then we'll type this in. Okay, and then click graph. And I can see with this one, it has two crossing points here, two x-intercepts, so I should get two solutions. So to find those, click second and then trace. And we want to find when it's at a height of zero, so go to option number two, click enter. Okay, and I'm going to do the left one here first. Got to move all the way over. You can see where you are for x. It'll say I'm at negative 4, and then it keeps moving over. Okay, and so left bound, get to the left side of it. So there's to the left, and then click Enter. And then right bound, I'm going to have to go to the right of it. So anywhere down here is fine. Click Enter. And then you can see it's going to search in between those points, and we want it to guess. That just means estimate. And we get negative 5. So let's write that down. x equals negative 5. Okay, and then let's find our other one. So we'll go second, trace, option number 2. Okay, move all the way over. So you can just hold it down. Okay, and then left bound, that's got to be somewhere to the left. So that is below. Click enter. And right bound, somewhere to the right. Anywhere to the right is above here. Click enter. And then again, it's searching in between there. One more time, click enter. And we get x equals 3. So we can write that down. So those are our two solutions. And a graph of what we had. We already saw it on the calculator, but this is the graph that we had. Okay, last one here now. This is more of an uh, application type question. So it says, suppose the cables of the suspension bridge is modeled by the function, and then they give us this function. What is the horizontal distance between the two towers? Express your answer to the ne nearest tenth of a meter. Okay, now this function they gave us. It's actually in vertex form. So I know where the vertex is. It's at 100 and negative 12. So let's just write that. That might be useful. And then next what I'm going to do is I'm just going to sketch a quick picture of a suspension bridge. Not my best sketch, but it'll do for now. So what we have is we have these cables on the suspension bridge. Those are being modeled by this function. Okay, so they make a parabola shape and that's why we are using a quadratic function. So what we want to find is we want to find the distance between the two towers. Okay, so picture our graph 
looking something like this. It's going to cut through those points. So this is our x-axis, this is our y-axis, and wherever it crosses on the x-intercepts, I can find those, get x equals something, x equals something. Okay, and if I know those two numbers, if I subtract them from one to the other, then that'll give me the distance between one to the other. Okay, so let's get out our calculator and let's put that into our y equals. Okay, so I'm just going to type this in. They had d, I'm going to have to use x. Okay, so I typed it all in, then I can click graph to see what my picture gives me. Okay, and so I don't get a very good picture. This is only going 10 up, 10 to the right, 10 down, and 10 to the left, so it's not large enough. So what I want to do, what you could try doing is click zoom, and then a good option is zoom zero. Zoom zero is zoom fit. So you can either click zero or go down and find it and then click enter on it. And so what that tried to do, it tried to zoom it out and show me a bit better of a picture. It still didn't give me anything too great. So what I want to do is I'm going to go to my window and I'm going to adjust it using my window. Okay, window, all that means is like on this graph, this is a window, like you're looking outside of an actual window. And depending on how big this window is, you can see more of the graph. Or if it's zoomed out or zoomed in, you can see more. So we want to change that look. So I knew the vertex was at 100 and negative 12. So I know I'm going to have to at least have that point in there and wider to show some of my graph. So I'm going to make my x min. I'm going to leave that where it's at. My x max though, because this was at 100, I'm going to double that and I'm going to go to 200 because that will be further past where the vertex is. It's going to be double that. Okay. Then what I'll do for my y min, I know it went as low as negative 12 because that was the vertex. So I'm going to just put in, say, negative 20. It's a little bit more past negative 12. And then my y max, I know I only cared about where it crossed at y was 0. So anything really positive is going to be fine, but I'm going to just put in 10 just to maybe give me a bit better of a picture. And now we'll click graph and see what we get. Okay, so I got this picture here now. I can see my crossing points. It's a lot better of a picture than what we had before. So let's find those. I'm going to click second and then trace. And we want to find height of zero, number two. Okay, and then scroll all the way over to the first x-intercept. Okay, and then left bound. So go somewhere to the left, enter right bound, somewhere on the right side of it, click enter, and then enter to guess. Okay, so I get x equals 30.7179. So let's write that down. And then we'll find our second one, so that's way over here. So second trace, option number two, then move all the way over. You can just hold it down and it should scroll. Okay, and then somewhere to the left, I'm to the left right now, click enter. Somewhere to the right, enter, and then it's going to search in between those two arrows. So right there, click enter for it to do that. And we get this right here. So let's write that down. So we got both of our numbers, and then we had said if I just subtracted these two numbers that would give me the distance from one to the other. So we're just going to subtract those two. So we're going to take 169.2820 and then subtract that 30 number. That is going to give me 138.6 meters and that's after I have rounded to the nearest tenth like it asked for. Okay. So that is our answer. So our graph again, it looks something like that. I'm just going to move this kind of out of the way. 
So the distance between them is about 138.6 meters. So last thing I'm just going to write here is now our textbook questions.